So when were you bit by the acting bug, or has this been the dream that has always kind of played on loop ever since you can remember? Like, I, I feel that's the case for me. It's always, really? It's always been that one that, that has... That fascinates me. I was exposed to theater as a very young boy because there was a... My parents bought a house on uh, Cape Cod for very, very cheap in the year I was born. Uh, you know, in, in those days, you could pick up a house on Cape Cod, right. eight, eight uh, houses up from the beach for pretty much a song. And so uh, it wasn't like we were rich or anything, but we got a house on Cape Cod and up the street on the Dennisport Howard line was a children's theater that was founded by uh, educators from Wheelock. Okay. And so they did four play, uh, summer plays a year mm -hmm. with community people, uh, age appropriate, meaning if it was a child's part, it would go to a child. If it was an adult's part, it would go for So it wasn't like a children's theater where just children come out and do Okay. You know, the reluctant right. dragon. Um, it was, you know, and some people, I found as I grew up there, because I walked in and never left, um, by the time I was 29, I was, I was like on, I was the vice president of the board, I was the head teacher, I was directing every year, I was adapting So plays. at the same I theater down there. the Cape? Yes. Okay. So, so 22 years. Every summer I would do, uh, like my life hasn't changed that much. <laughs> In 50 years. No. In 50 years. Because um, I just always did theater. But mm -hmm. I walked in and I saw Wind of the Willows. And I saw Peter Pan, which is almost a cliche. And I saw The Reluctant Dragon. And I, I just was mesmerized and kept imagining myself doing that. Because it seemed so magic and so fun. Freeing. And, yeah, just wonderful. I mean, the imagination was, you know, my brother uh, is an illustrator, a cartoonist. Okay. He was addicted to Disney. So I would go to the children's plays and go like, oh, that would be like being in a Disney cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, and just, you know. So, fun. so that was pretty much, I developed kind of how to entertain and how to perform at a very at young seven. age. I, I, they started putting me on the main stage. I took classes. I took okay. a lot of classes. I took technical workshop. Mm -hmm. I took drama workshop. And then we started doing improv classes and we started doing uh, directing classes. Oh, my goodness. I think when I was like 10 or 11. That's great. But by the time I was 10, the summer I was 10, they put me on the main stage. And I did two plays that summer. I did two plays the next summer. By the time... Were you hopelessly in love? Yeah. So when I went to high school... The guy who ran the program was very serious, and I went to an all boys school, so we did things like um, A Man for All Seasons and uh, Antigone and uh, Waiting for Godot and The Barber of Seville. And we, we didn't do Gypsy and, and Mame, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So we were doing uh, uh, Eugene O'Neill, and he came up to me and he said, uh, I'm looking for guys who have any kind of experience at theater. And by then, I had like 11 years right. of classes and being on a stage. And so he started kind of saying, do you want to design the set? Do you want to play the lead? My father wanted me to have something to fall back on. He didn't think the acting thing was ever going to mm -hmm. go anywhere. Who could blame him? My parents um, are the same way. He, right. Parents are usually like... There are 4,000 people coming out of acting programs every year, spilling into New York, looking for agents. You know, it's impossible. So uh, I was not going to go to college for acting. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, which was the first time I ever set foot in Providence, uh, when I was 17, there was the New England Drama festival, high school drama festival, and uh, I was playing Dr. Bartolo in The Barber of Seville. It was a Commedia production. It was slapstick. There was a lot of silliness. I was in a fat suit this big. I was 17, and uh, the judges gave me the Best Actor Award, and it was kind of a big deal when I mean, you're that a, that's age. That's exciting, exhilarating, you know, absolutely. Best Actor in New England, mm -hmm. 17, sure. Um, however, it was very performative. It was very about comic timing. It was very about being larger than life. And people were, like, just screaming, laughing. It was like a wall of sound, you know, which is addictive. And they gave me this award. And, uh, you know, comedy usually isn't awarded. But uh, that was raw comedy and hilarious and directed really well in the comedia spirit. And my father looked at me and said, you're really good at this. You should do this. So I got that accepted to, so yeah, that felt really, really good. He passed away like three years later. So that was really, uh, a you gift. know, like, I love you. Mm. I, I, you. You are good at what you want to mm -hmm. do. Um, 
is this too long? No, so no. then I, Not at I all. we he and I walked into colleges, NYU and uh, Holy Cross, and and uh, you know we drove to New York, and and I walked into Hofstra University. Um, and when they had the globe up, they used to, they still do. They have a new one, but it's a replica of Shakespeare's globe in the fifth largest auditorium in New York State. So if you can fill that with your voice mm -hmm. in the days before everybody being mic, um, you could do a Broadway house, you okay. know, fourteen hundred seats at the Neil Simon. So um, I fell in love with that. I mean, it was the globe, you know, it was Shakespeare's globe, and in my little imagination, you know, everybody wanted to be Laurence Olivier. In, in 1978. And uh, so I went to Hofstra. I, w I got a BFA. I was the lead in a lot of plays and I loved it and I learned so much. I, I was uh, drinking a little. It was a little about being in plays and drinking mm -hmm. uh, and, right. and figuring Young out and who fun. I was. Exactly. And that's what college is. Um, but all that while I was going to see everything that the Boston Shakespeare Company was doing, uh, which they had a repertory company, and that you would see the same actor play Toby Belch, play Hamlet, play... Steve Avison is a, a brilliant uh, a newscaster now, but he was an incredible Shakespearean <laughs> actor, and Will LeBeau, and, and they were just like heroes of mine, and I would go and see them and say, that's the dream. You know? So my senior year at Hofstra, Uta Hagen, Uta... Hagen <laughs> came and gave us a master class and that must uh, have been amazing. And we did some scenes for her and she, she finally gave us this talking to about everybody wants to be Laurence Olivier, that's a different culture, the, the, the state pays for the theater. Um, this is America. Find somebody 10 years older than you and ask them a lot of questions. Just say, what's your favorite play? What's your favorite playwright? What's your favorite experience? What's your worst experience? Uh, talk to me. Talk to me. Teach me. Let me learn mm -hmm. from your experience because you have a lot more than I do.